Well, should we do should we do an episode and then we can maybe try and do some other bullshit at the end for Lucas to cut around? Yep. Okay. Well, link. Yeah, All right, am I? Um. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> So we spent the last couple of episodes talking about um, real things. Real talk. <laughs> Let's stop that. Let's not do that. So it's, yeah, I thought, why not just talk about some imaginary stuff this time? Um, I want to talk about import maps, which right. is a new proposal. Uh, that is very much of the early messing around right. phase. So that, yeah, right. let, let's let's give it context because I've seen we have an article on this. Um, it, it 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 like we have had a lot of confusion about how stable certain features are right, when we yes. announce them. Where is it at? Well, yes. Um, <laughs> so yes. Before we talk about what it is, I would say some of it is in Chrome Canary behind the flag. Uh, right. an, or, an origin trial. So you can experiment with it on in production in production with the whole origin trial thing. Good. But none um, of this is set in stone, so it could still change yeah. how it works, why it works. This episode could be completely useless by the it's, time it goes out. So I guess it's also pretty much Chrome only then at this point. Like it none is, of the other browsers yeah. have it behind the flag? Nope. No, nope. right. it, it, it's it, just us. It'd be Chrome only. Um, so what is it? What what is it? What is it? Actually, I'm going to answer that because I did the slides and the <laughs> script and everything. Um, we've got a, a module import with it's your old library module scripts. See, I used your library. Nice. See, you're happy. Didn't use IDB key valve for once. No, no, <laughs> I thought I changed it up this time. Um, but a lot of us are more familiar to seeing something like this yeah, because that's how the node import works, and most of the bundlers support that kind of specifier, where you just say, just put the node package name in there, and we'll yes. resolve the rest. And the way this actually works in Node is it will start at you know, whatever module has, uh, this contains this, and it will go up through all of the, uh, the directories, all the parent directories, looking for directories that have node modules alongside. Right? All right, so it goes so upwards and tries to find the, the most the, the closest node nope, module. No, nope, it'll find them all. Oh, really? Yeah. That it seems wasteful. It goes and find them all, and then it will find. So, if you put a like, node modules folder in slash, like in the root of my hard drive. I think that will work. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, but then there's also the special global one for your global modules, so that goes at the Did end you as well. It, it Well, yeah, if you do uh, npm install slash g, dash g, oh, it goes in your global stuff. Yeah, um, you're right. I never thought about that. Yeah. No, no. And then it will iterate through all of those, and it will look for a directory called comlink in each of those. And if there's multiple? Uh, well, it will. So it's going through them in closest. order. Yeah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So when it finds comlink in one of them, it will go, right, does this have a package JSON? Uh, if it does, then I'm going to look in the main yeah. thing, uh, and that's the script I'm going to load. If it doesn't have that, then I'm going to try and load index. JS. Mm -hmm. If that's not there, I'm going to try and load index.json. If that's not there, I'm going to try and load index.node. Uh, for really? like binary modules, yes, yeah, that's how it works. Um, and if they're not there, it, it, it then goes up the, the directories, yeah, yeah, and off okay. it goes. Um, we want that on the web. Is that what you're saying? Is, and that's the problem. Is we literally cannot do that on the web because imagine how many requests it would have to make Be just great. to find a script, right? <laughs> Time it's, to interactive. Two and a half years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we needed a new system in order to bring this to the web, and that is import maps. That is what we're going to talk about. Um, oh, it's a new type. It's a new script type. Can I also put in a file? Um, yes. Yes, you can. And you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, and, it, and we will get on to why. Um, but this, this is what it looks like. Uh, you'll so it's literally it. a map that maps from like the identifiers. To, oh, that's interesting, because I remember that there is a rule for both dynamic and static imports that they have to start with slash or like with a relative or absolute path. They yes. They were not allowed to start with. Like this. Like yes, modules on the web right now have to start with a uh, dot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has to be like dot dot dot. Um, what was it? It's dot slash dot dot slash. slash because or a valid URL or slash. Right. right? Okay. Like something like that. Okay. Um, and, and so this would let you with this. Now you would just be able to reference. This open for the, oh, cool. Okay. So mm -hmm. reference com link and. So there is no way load. that an import map. Identifier could clash with existing production code out there right now because of that rule. Ah, hold ah. on, hold on to that. But yet, as long as you've got this, uh, one of these has to go before anything that imports anything. 
any right. import statement. If you have one of these later on, it will just error. It, you, you'll get an error on this script tag, and it will just be ignored. Okay. Uh, so this, you know, ideally, right in the head of your document before everything else. And this is and where you that's define. That's why you probably shouldn't put them in a file. And that's why you probably shouldn't put them in a file. Um, but yes, now this works. Neat. Just works. Um, uh, thank you for spoiling my next slide multiple times. It's just goes to show we don't rehearse this, right? Um, yes, I would say you can do this. Uh, it has to have a special MIME type. But yes, you shouldn't, because then you've got this head of line so blocking thing. Will that mean that a script type import map is also deferred by default? Because modules are deferred by default. No, this will, I mean, it's not going to block rendering of anything, but it will right. be immediate fetch. Uh, and it will block subsequent script, script tags. tags. Um, so that's basically, if, using you, if you put it in an Excel file but put the script tag high up, you should still be fine. Uh, but we'll, it's one we'll of those rely things. on it, but you should be fine. But there's a reason we inline scripts, right? And if because if it's a very small file, yeah. then the amount you pay for that request will, and response. Will it stay small? Will people really keep small import maps? I kind of expect them to be like. <laughs> that is a question, and yeah, and it would be interesting. And so maybe with some of the use cases we go through here, I have been also wondering how large these might get. Because the thing we saw there is, I, I would say, one of the more boring use cases for it. Um, another interesting one. Mm -hmm. So this is what the example we had before. Yeah. I can import comlink because it's in the import map. Mm -hmm. But we've seen that's the like thing this. that usually works in Node. In Node land, mm -hmm. you would have yeah. Um, this works as well. Um, oh, really? So that it you do something like this. So there's a special rule if the thing ends in a slash, then you are defining a prefix. Oh, for all of those. that's really nice that they thought of that. Yes. I would have expected I have to define every like, single static, one. Analyze all the imports I have and define a map. This is actually really neat. Yep. But they don't have a rule that can just define the last one and index is assumed, like it is a node. Uh, you, no, index is not assumed. And also things uh, like in node, you can miss out the extension. Oh, yeah, don't know. That, I mean, that wouldn't just. You could use import maps to work around that, but you would have to do every single file. Right, because basically, and you had to define everything. It's like, yes, the thing without the extension, it maps to the thing with, with the, extension. the extension. Yes, so you can do that, but mm, probably yeah, don't, don't, unless you just, for some reason, know of a way around it. Um, you can do this. Also, oh, basically, I can do like, like rewrites. So yes. something that is already a valid import path, I can now just say, you know what? It's actually here. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's neat. And it's you could say that this could just create a lot of confusing code where oh, yeah. your scripts are doing 100%. one thing. But I think there's a really interesting use case with this that I'm really excited about. Um, so here's an example import. But in production, it will most likely look more like this. Yes, because you sh at least it should be, because good caching, you need this. You need your unique file name. So then if you change the file, you will watch this. Whoop, there you go. Change the hash. Oh, I set you up for this one. I know. That's, that's so great, good. isn't it? Um, and then it means you've changed the file. So each of those resources can cache forever yeah. because you changed the file when, when you're changing the content. But the problem with this is you've now also changed the content of the parent file. Yes. So you need to update the hash of that file. Yeah, and if nothing else changed, people will download a file that is exactly the same except for the imports. And yes. now with the import map, I see where you're going with this. I'm yes. Gonna... So even with a small module change, you end up invalidating like massive yeah. tree. Potentially, like the whole lot. Always from the lead, from where you did the change to the root of your Tr thing, at least that one branch. Potentially more. It will all invalidate. So the idea is, what if we could just do that, and then in your import map, that's where oh, that the hash goes. Very nice. So that means if you change foo, we just change foo. Watch. And so the interesting thing go. is that this wouldn't be possible with HTTP redirects or rewrites because it wouldn't hit the HTTP cache. Exactly. You could yeah. do it maybe in a service worker, I guess? You could do this in a service worker. You could intercept all of this stuff, um, but it wouldn't be there for that very first request where your service worker is yeah. installed. Whereas with imports, import maps, it is it is just there. That's Yeah, that's a really exciting use case, actually, for this. I, I, think, it, I think it's great. And so that means, yes, the user will obviously have to download the new foo Blah, 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 blah. But, but only that. Only that. Only that small change. The entire rest of the pipeline can still just rely on, you know, has to load all the static imports before executing. So everything will just work and keep working. I, so I think that's, yeah, I think that's a lovely little use case. Um, so here's a fun so. one. So here's a fun one. We haven't done that in a while. Although I said these script things, these import map scripts, they have to be before anything that imports anything. 
of what is are invalid, so they have to be the. Oh, they're know. actually invalid. I didn't catch that. I thought just like the modules above it wouldn't respect them. No, it's it will error and will ignore. Actually, that's um, probably a good idea. Yeah. It, it, so it it won't error modules. It will just error. It will error on the You'll script elements. You'll see an error that there was a that yeah. this is not in the correct place. And but it will it'll also it. let the other things that have invalid import statements error yes. out. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can still create them dynamically as long as you're still creating them dynamically before any of your imports. And I think this is really cool, because you could have something like this, where it does a feature test. Mm -hmm. um, like, oh, is it, and it, it could be like a new JavaScript thing, could be a new DOM oh, thing, really new JavaScript cool. syntax. And you could say, right, now dump out one of these import maps. And instead of loading main, load main So modern. for example, I could say, do you have readable stream, transform stream, writable stream? If I do, I'm just going to create this redirect to a small file, which just re-export the native yeah. implementations. If not, load the entire polyfill thing. And in my code, I just import one normal module. Yes. And I will get the polyfill if it needs to be one. Otherwise, it won't be. Exactly that. That's really cool. And, but it means you could do the same with new JavaScript syntax. So it, you know, yeah. if the scope operator became a thing, let's hope it does. It's not going to, though, is it? But <laughs> let's hope it does. Uh, it means you could do something like this, like direct it to another file, which makes use of that and therefore doesn't have to be transpiled, that kind of could thing. Could be smaller. Could be smaller, so hopefully. Why, why did you do this? <laughs> do, you know, do you know why I did this? No, that's why I'm asking. Oh, well, do, well, <laughs> come on, we do the show. Do this? Oh, do you? <laughs> Sometimes we make believe on this show a little bit, just for the, the, the chat. No, I, legit, like, I, I, I guess it has to do with some sort of escaping, but I didn't. It, it is. Because like, this is just a normal string. You, this is like the only part we make use of the template literal. Yeah, the HTML language. parser, once it enters a script, it, the end of your script is when there is angle bracket slash script, mm -hmm. angle bracket. That's the end of your script. So without this little trick, uh, the script would end there, and all of this would bleed into the HTML. Oh, that's the th Yes, yes, I remember now. Yes. That's you, even in a string literal, you can't just have angle bracket slash script, because by the time your file gets parsed, the parser will be like, yeah, script ends here. Yes. Yeah, because this is HTML parser time rather than JavaScript parser time. So yeah, you've always got to do something to work around that. This is the first time I think I've ever seen this. <laughs> both like both okay. this kind of escape, but also mm. insert adjacent HTML. I've never used it. Oh, I, actually, I love insert adjacent I HTML. I always create. Uh, to create element and set in a HTML or something. Yeah, and I quite often end up doing that, or you're using some sort of library that's essentially making it easier for you, but for the sake of a slide. And this is an old Microsoft API. This was one of the non-standard things that went into Internet Explorer, blah, blah, blah. Four. It could be it could be 5.5 <laughs> or so. It was in that era somewhere. Um, and But they standardized it, because it is actually pretty useful. Very weird API. You can say, <laughs> I want it to go after the end of <laughs> The current script, that's how it works. And then it will just yeah, parse it as HTML. Disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. But for this case, it was actually quite it was actually quite useful. <laughs> quite, I was quite happy with it. Um, anyway, have you seen this type of thing before? Of course I have. It's disgusting. It is. So what is happening here is they're trying to load like jQuery from some sort of CDN. Um, where you know, in the hope that it will already be cached because they've used it on a different site or whatever. Um, but some countries don't have access to particular CDNs, mm -hmm. or sometimes the CDN is down or something. So you end up with this little script block here going, well, if jQuery is not there, then I'll load it from my own server instead. Document dot write. They should <laughs> be using insert adjacent HTML, shouldn't they? They should be using ins well. Uh, the problem with that is that would behave differently. Because that wouldn't load the script synchronously. Oh, it would be an async. It yeah. would be an async script. Yeah. Uh, so that's why they use document.write, which is horrible. Uh, we've got a little script escape again. Different nice. through in a different <laughs> version of that there. Um, so I'm less excited about this feature. Because my response to this would be, don't load jQuery from a CDN. Just load yep. it on your own server, because then you're not going to have Especially the. Like Safari already double keys their caches. Like, yep. No other site can put something in the cache for you and Safari anyway. Don't yeah. rely on it. And Chrome as well, is yeah, doing the double key thing. And you're going to hit another connection setup time for this. Yeah. yeah, OK, we think it's bad. But do you know what? Modules. Let's talk about it. They've uh, <laughs> bot maps have a solution for this. As I say, I'm not massively excited about it. But what you can say is, you know, jQuery, and you can give it two URLs. Also, we'll try the first. And if it fails, we'll use the second. Yeah. All right, then. Fair enough. Yeah. It's in there. So I just wanted to mention it. Um, 
Here's one I'm a little bit more excited about. Oh, it's so, a roller coaster of excitement. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? Um, so here I'm loading, like, I've got Foo, which is pointing to Foo version 2. Oh, because we have past version 1 now. Past version 1 of Foo. Um, but I'm also using Comlink. But Good man. Comlink also uses Foo, but it expects version 1. What are you going to do? The <laughs> Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> That doesn't work. That doesn't fit. Shut up. <laughs> right. In this situation, here is what you would do. You've got this scope section where you can say you're essentially providing exceptions to the import section. So uh, for any modules that are under this directory, like onwards, that have that sort of URL well prefix. Well done them that they thought about this. Um, there are exceptions there. So is that something that we think will happen, that you know, libraries will stop bundling their dependencies and just leave them as like raw identifiers and leave it up to you as the final app developer to actually you know bend the arrows the right way that every import points to the actual correct file. I think that's the dream. I think the dream is to to find a way that um, to turn node modules, turn the, the node resolution mm -hmm. system yeah. into something that can be described by this import I mean, map. Yeah, I guess we would expect bundlers to output this for us. Yes, right? absolutely. Because they already do the whole static analysis and do everything. It's like, you know, here's your import map. Just put it in your HTML. And I think those libraries already exist. Mm -hmm. Like people have experimentally gone and like, you know, or we can generate an import map based on the project oh, yeah, structure. I know that the roll-up bundle object pretty much contains all the data we need to do this. Yeah. Yeah, so it's easy, it's easily done, which is great. Yeah, yeah we, you know, whether a human would be writing this or whether it would be generated yeah. by a bundler, who knows. Um, final thing, and this is one of the things I am actually most excited about. Oh boy. Import scheme. Right. So, I, oh, so that basically says so any old element that takes URLs can now take something with an import scheme and if we look it up in the map. Is that what is happening? That is it. That is exactly it. It's uh, anything that can ha that supports URLs. So it's the same thing then that I can prevent invalidation of the entire resource. OK, here. Works in CSS background images. Nice. Works anywhere oh, you yes, use it's URLs. It's a scheme. So anything, yeah. it would even work in fetch. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Ah, there is a slight problem with like relative URLs because, um, especially like, if you're in CSS land, mm. it knows it's relative to the CSS file because that's how referrers work in CSS. But if you're in a script and you do fetch, your any relative URLs are relative to the documents. I'm going to derail this for a second because I've passed drive me mad on the web. I have I like that roll up when you like bundle it, everything just ends up in a root folder. There's no folders anymore. There's mm. no subdirectories. Everything is just dumped into one directory. There's no clashes because they have hashes in the file name. It makes things easier. I would say for anything that is not going to be user visible, I would tend to agree. Yeah. Um, I like, obviously, we like good URLs. Right. Things that are going to appear in the URL. shouldn't sacrifice bar. that. But basically, what yeah. I, have, I have subfolders for the index HTML of my blog post. But all the images in the blog post are back in the root folder. So Absolutely. every URL is just, or every image include is just a slash something something. Yep. And it makes things simple. But it means that in, in cases where it's going to be relative to your document rather than relative to the module, uh, the proposal is to have something like import.meta.resolve, yeah. which will take a relative URL and cool. it will do it relative to the module rather. You could even do things here. Like this is actually really good for like progressive enhancement when you want to do like, oh, does this browser have WebP support? And you can bend the import the right way. I mean, we have picture element and everything. I know that. Yes. But now you have programmatic control over it. Well, do you know what? I'm glad you said that, because I've realized there was a little bit I was going to talk about earlier, and I forgot. Um, in terms of progressive enhancement, this model where you're saying like map like foo.mjs mm -hmm. to the hashed version, you could ship this to browsers that don't support import maps. As right, long as you also have foo.mjs yeah. in your server. So you, you would have this URL, this on your server, which has the full caching headers. Yeah. And then you would have this on your server as well as a fallback, which had no cache. Yeah. So and old browsers aren't excluded. They get a kind of, kind of worse loading performance. Yes. But they are not excluded. Like the thing still works. So like maybe when it gets to like most browsers have this, but some still don't, then that's a switch point and you've got a progressive really cool. I'm yeah. I'm really excited about this. So am I. Now, I'm I think. sure it'll change a little bit before it reaches oh, yeah. browsers properly. Yeah, I think it's very incoherent. important. Like this is not happening yet. No. This is an experiment. Like it, at this point, it's in Canary. It's unstable because we have an origin trial, but it's not 
enabled and stable by default. Yep. There's still standards going on. There is a discussion going on. We should link to the proposal and stuff so yep. people can weigh in if they want to. And again, because yes, we're looking for developer feedback on this. Like, yeah. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you like? What do you hate? What do you think should be different? Um, and now is the right time to uh, to be letting us know what, yeah, all of that stuff. Weigh in. <laughs> Don't pretend like you have muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, 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 he's got like strong fingers. These are typing fingers. Every day, everything <laughs> else is just rot. <laughs> that's, that's it. I can't.